in providing better services and facilities in education system at the accounting department. The increasing needs of graduates with good qualification and international recognition drive the accounting department to focus on developing main competencies of technology information, international financial reporting standards, public sector, and Islamic accounting. Under the professional management, towards the world-class quality, with a vision to become a global-oriented accounting department, by focusing on strengthening faith and piety to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mastering science and technology of accounting, and being the center of excellence, which is beneficial for people. With the missions of being actively involved in the nation's development process, enlightenment of people through three pillars of higher education, and creating young, noble, and global accountant. Since 2005, Accounting Department Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta has been accredited A. The establishment of academic atmosphere and the development of competitive character are improved continuously. As a result, the public trust to the accounting department is even higher which could be seen from the large number of applicants. Learning in the accounting department of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta is supported with good quality of supporting facilities, such as library, where students can access the relevant and appropriate references, such as e-journal and e-book. Administration room where students get administrative services in Wi-Fi area, laboratory for practicum, in Kiai Haji Ahmad Dahlan Mosque. Accounting departments also directly supervises Accounting Students Association, which can serve as a facility for students to develop soft skills in the fields of organization and self-development. Besides supported by qualified facilities, academic atmosphere is also established by the certified lecturers academically and practically who are actively involved in academic and professional activities nationally or internationally as an effort to renew the accounting science owed. The learning process also reverse to the competency-based curriculum, referring to Indonesian National Qualification Framework through learning method, approaches of central learning, discussion, presentation, and problem-solving. Accounting department also tries to create prospective accountants who are professional, responsive, confident, creative, trusted, and innovative on each graduate student of Accounting Department of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Various efforts carried out by Accounting Department, such as providing supporting facilities and establishing cooperation with domestic and foreign agencies, are parts of the process to create a conducive academic atmosphere and increase the achievement of academic community of Accounting Department of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Being with realization that intelligence and people's well-being are the shared responsibilities. Thus, providing the best for the next generation is one responsibility that should be implemented to become excellent and Islamic in the world of accounting nationally and internationally. Accounting Department of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta Excellent and Islamic Yogyakarta
jiwa dari Pulau Jawa. Kekayaan budaya yang terus terjaga melahirkan jiwa-jiwa bersahaja. Menciptakan para intelektual muda yang siap mendunia. Di sini terlahir Persyarikatan Muhammadiyah, organisasi Islam progresif yang bergerak di berbagai bidang kehidupan, salah satunya pendidikan. Atas gagasan Profesor Dr. Kahar Muzakir pada tanggal 1 Maret 1981, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta hadir memperkaya kemampuan para intelektual muda, mewujudkan sarjana muslim berahlak mulia, cakap, percaya diri, mampu mengembangkan ilmu pengetahuan dan teknologi yang berguna bagi umat bangsa dan perkembangan dunia. Program Studi Akuntansi Fakultas Ekonomi UMG itu didirikan tahun 1993. Waktu itu didirikan eh, dengan dua latar belakang minimal. Yang pertama adalah kebutuhan pasar. Bahwa sektor Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dr. Shadia, you are already here Assalamualaikum Yes, I'm already here Oke okay. And Mr. Bahrul, are you here? Oke okay. Oke okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. It's a precious chance for me to be your master of ceremony of this event. My name is Anisa Rahmandita. This event is visiting professor with the topic Islamic perspective on marketing mix. That's a really unfamiliar topic that very interested to her, right? Okay, first of all, Let's thanks to Allah who already give us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy so we can attend and participate in this event. And praise and salutation to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who had brought us from the darkness to the lightness. I would like to welcome to Dr. Shadiah Abdul Shukur as our speaker today and Mr. Bahrul Ilmi that will be our moderator of this event. And, and welcome to the all the audience. And welcome to all, welcome to all of the audience. On this special afternoon, we have several agenda as follows. The first one is opening. The second one is speech from Dr. Randa Arun Indrasari. The third one is main lecture from Dr. Shadi Abdul Shukor, which will be led by Mr. Bahrul Ilmi as the moderator. And the fourth one is closing. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin this event by reciting Basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Move on to the next agenda is welcoming speech from Dr. Randa Arun Indrasari as Director of International Program of Accounting. For Dr. Randa Arun, time is yours. Oke, okay, um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, praise and gratitude. We pray to the presence of all subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us uh, so many blessings so that we can gather in this online uh, place and atmosphere. 
We don't forget to give salawat and salam to the Prophet Muhammad SAW who has brought mankind from the Jahiliyyah realm to the Islamic realm. Uh, first, um, I say thank you, the Honorable the Speaker, uh, Ibu Sadiah Abdul Sukur. Um, nice to meet you, even in online. Uh, yes, we really you. miss. We really miss uh, Malaysia. Actually, uh, usually we visit Malaysia once a year, but uh, since last year we like stuck in Indonesia, and um, not, uh, it's difficult to say hello uh, offline with uh, our friends in Malaysia as well. So, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, you uh, are in. Good healthy, Bu uh, Sadia. Um, thanks for your time as well to give up to give us a visiting professor even online. Okay, and the second is um, say thank you to the honourable the moderator, um, Pak Muhammad Bahrul Ilmi, and the last is the honourable on the audience that already joined this um, evening. Uh, visiting lecture. Okay, Alhamdulillah, today we can join this event, a uh, public lecture with the title Islamic Perspective on Marketing Mix. It looks that the topic is likely more in management um, theory, but actually there is some knowledge that uh, we could take to uh, from this topic. I hope that all uh, you, the audience here, can um, have a like the new knowledge about the marketing mix. Uh, so I hope all of you that already joined can enjoy this event and have a new knowledge about it. Okay, last, um, I say thank you uh, to the visiting professor, uh, Busadia, um, who sacrificed her time to give us uh, the lecture. And thanks to the audience who participated in this general lecture. And last, thanks to the IPEX committee that I don't, uh, I don't have, uh, I can mention one by one. Okay, I hope this uh, public lecture can um, run uh, smoothly and there's no, um, some, uh, the internet should be uh, good so that we can like uh, share the knowledge uh, with, uh, uh, there's no problem with the internet. Okay, I think this is a speech for me, and I give it back to um, MC Anissa. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Randa Arum Indrasari, for your warm welcoming speech. May Allah always bless us. Amin. The next agenda is main lecture from Dr. Shadiah Abdul Shukor, which will be led by Mr. Bahrul Ilmi as the moderator. Mr. Bahrul Ilmi is one of our accounting lecture. So for Mr. Bahrul Ilmi and Madam Shadiah, time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Sister Anissa. And also thank you very much for speech from the Dr. Randa Arun Indrasari, the director of international program. So good afternoon, uh, Dr. Shadia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So how is everything is good in Malaysia? Okay, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, it's, uh, it's long time uh, for me to see the Malaysia because it's uh, almost I think uh, one year, one year, one two year. Last, it's almost yeah. two year. <laughs> two year. Okay. Stay with me. <laughs> I always go to Jogja. You ask Doctor Arum. Oh my God. Not for this year and last year. <laughs> oh, it's mean that this is not your first time you came to to Jakarta, right? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, inshallah. Okay, uh, uh, okay. Uh, for all the students, so I have to introduce uh, Dr. Shadia first because uh, today uh, Dr. Shadia will give um, knowledge uh, and some issue regarding the Islamic products on marketing mix. So actually. Uh, uh, this topic is very interesting because in Indonesia, uh, now in, in IPEC program, we have the entrepreneurship subject. So this subject actually talking about the entrepreneurship. So all the students have to pass this subject. 
and uh, additionally they have to know about how they sell the product how they uh, how they make the product is uh, good for the customer especially okay so before that i, I think uh, i have to uh, mention or i have to read the dr sadira kurukulum fite shahid shadia uh, kurukulum fite so dr shadia actually uh, she got uh, Doctor of Philosophy in Marketing for the Cardiff University, and also from the postgraduate diploma in Cardiff University, uh, United Kingdom. And I think uh, Dr. Shadia is quite a lot, not only quite a lot, is very long uh, experience for teaching and also publication. So I think uh, this is a good time for us for uh, learning regarding how we understand about the Islamic product on marketing mix. Okay, so uh, because this is very interesting, so I think uh, enough for me to introduce uh, the Sadia. So I think this is a good point, a uh, good time to listen about the Islamic product on marketing mix. So Dr. Sadia, this time is yours. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bahrol. So I can share my screen now. Oh, okay. You can. Okay. All right. I hope everybody can see my screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Baru, for the introduction. Um, and then uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Arum, as well. Um, for being here and for inviting me. So I wish I could be there um, to, to deliver this lecture face-to-face, uh, -face, not online. Uh, but uh, what to do because of this pandemic, um, everyone is at home, I suppose. Uh, so I think uh, in UMY, everybody is working from home and the students are from home as well? Yeah, certain, certain lecture. <laughs> oh, okay, not at home. <laughs> I see. Ah, all right. Because in Malaysia now, uh, for your information, we are in a total lockdown still. Totally. So yes, um, this is our third week because the, the number of cases keep on increasing. Mm -hmm. So our Prime Minister has announced a total lockdown. So mm -hmm. for university, uh, only selected staff can, can be in the in the campus and students are basically in their kampung, uh, in, in their home, hometown. So for the lecturers, um, I think this is our third semester delivering online lecture. So I, I just wish that uh, this COVID will go away <laughs> and then uh, immediately so that we can have our, our, our normal life back. Okay, I just can't wait for that. Anyhow, uh, glad to be here. Uh, even though we are still in this pandemic, uh, uh, knowledge sharing is still there. Uh, and I think uh, thank you to all this technology, um, Zoom, uh, MS Teams, um, uh, and, and Google Meet allows us to, to meet and also uh, we can do this knowledge sharing. Um, knowledge sharing uh, every day, anytime actually. Okay, so for today, um, like has been mentioned by uh, Mr. Bahro, uh, my, my research interest is in uh, marketing to be specific in consumer behavior. Uh, I'm still learning, yeah, um, because um, uh, I think uh, that is what interesting about academics, um, academic career, whereby you, you still have time to learn every day, okay? Um, learning not only from, uh, from research, but also I can learn from my students, actually. Okay, so uh, thank you to UMY for inv uh, inviting me today, uh, once again. Okay, uh, just a brief information about myself has been introduced by Mr. Bahrul just now. Uh, I'm from uh, Faculty of Economics and Muamala, UFC Science Islam Malaysia. Uh, Mr. Bahrul, you should come to USIM. Uh, Dr. Arum, uh, she's been there already. Oh, I have uh, been there 2014 or I have been there. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I, 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 went to, I went to the international conference in USIM. I, I remember that. Did you meet me? Oh, I, have <laughs> no, no, no. I was I was there in accounting program because uh, I think it's really talking about the Islamic banking and finance. I think. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I buff conference. Yeah, I can. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So for this year, we don't have I buff conference. We have uh, icons conference. Okay. okay. 
All right. Uh, so um, my background, a bit about my background. Uh, I had degree uh, in marketing and then um, I pursue master at MBA uh, in Malaysia and then continue my study uh, in Cardiff University. So my research area, currently I'm looking at um, consumer behavior, um, especially for financial services uh, product. Okay, so um, this is my outline, the outline for today's presentation. Um, so uh, I've been told by Dr. Arum that um, the students are basically accounting students, but you all are taking entrepreneurship, am I right? Okay, good. So perhaps marketing is part of uh, entrepreneurship um, and perhaps today I have tuned a bit uh, my, my lecture uh, towards that. So um, I'll start off by giving, uh, giving everybody um, an introduction about my topic for today. And then we'll be talking, we'll be talking about, sorry, we'll be talking about marketing mix um, from Islamic perspective. So, um, and then uh, I'll just give some uh, a short conclusion at the end of my presentation. Okay, all right. So um, normally for class, uh, especially online class, it's, it's, it's quite challenging for lecturer because um, the lecturer is talking alone in front of the laptop and then uh, hoping that somebody can respond. All right, so uh, I'll start off by, by having a, a short uh, interaction with my audience here, the students. Uh, if, if the students can go to www.menti.com and then you key in this code 56373124 and then you key in uh, and also mention to me um, characteristics of a Muslim entrepreneur. Okay, so perhaps you can also uh, uh, scan the QR code and then uh, you, you can give your opinion in terms of uh, what are the characteristics of a Muslim entrepreneur. Okay. So I think I have how many here? One second. Okay. What I'll do now is basically... Um, I just stop to share my my screen for a while, and then I'll go to the menti.com to see who has participated. So we have to mention that the characteristic of Muslim entrepreneur. So it uh, should what be the what characteristic? should be what the characteristic, right? Yes, the characteristic of a Muslim entrepreneur. Uh, in your opinion, it, it, it's okay. Um, in your opinion, what should a uh, 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 Muslim entrepreneur um, a characteristic should have uh, a Muslim entrepreneur um, characteristic? Okay. Okay, then. All right, let me share you the screen and then we see. So far we have four participants, I mean, oh. four students who have uh, actually give um, uh, the answers. I hope uh, the rest can also join in and also provide your answer as well. So I think, I, I think Dr. Shadia can, uh, uh, just again, I mean, uh, can mention again the okay. slide. The slide, I think. You have oh, to, okay, okay, maybe okay. I think <laughs> quite, <laughs> it's very quick. Okay, if you can see my, my screen now, you go to menu.com oh, yeah. and then oh, the code yeah. is 563 567314. Oh, okay. okay, so so far we have five. All right, so as you can see, um, somebody mentioned here about trust. Yeah. Rich. Okay, <laughs> Honest. trust. Yes, trust. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I assume that uh, the, the student mentioned about um, somebody can be trusted, okay, Muslim entrepreneur. Believe, not lie, okay, something to do with trust. Help, okay, helping other people. Halal, okay. How about the rest? Would you like to join? Okay, guys. Okay. So you have right. to submit. You have to submit. Otherwise, you <laughs> will get, will get, see, you know. <laughs> so okay. all of you, please. 
go to menti.com. <laughs> menti.com and then uh, it will ask you to key in the code and the code is 56373124 don't worry this one is just your your answers and also what you your view about um uh, characteristic of a muslim entrepreneur uh -huh. okay somebody who you uh, someone mentioned here about work hard okay all right any more okay so Connected to the God. Okay, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Talking about God. Taqwa. Alright. Iman. Alright. Okay, so these are basically characteristics of a Muslim entrepreneur. Okay, keep on coming. Uh, the answers. Okay, uh, while you all do this, okay, I can go back to my slide presentation. Okay. Okay, just uh, I'll just leave it there. Perhaps we can go to this uh, characteristic of uh, Muslim entrepreneur at the end. Okay, uh, first thing first, um, I'll just give some introduction about uh, marketing. Okay, um, I think everybody knows and also talk about marketing, right? Um, especially for entrepreneur. Uh, marketing here refers, this is not, um, basically this is um, the definition. Uh, I think it's a quick definition about marketing. It refers to activities a company undertakes to promote the buying or selling of a product, service, or goods. Okay, so imagine that you have a company. Okay, and when you have a company, what what actually uh, a company has to do, especially a company, any companies, what they have to do is basically they have to identify a product. Okay, they know customer need something, so they can come up with a product. So uh, then they, they, they have an idea what product that actually they can uh, produce that they can offer to the customer. And then they have to think about the packaging, packaging for that particular product. Okay, they have uh, a product already, then they have to think about the packaging. Um, and then they have to think about pricing. Okay, what price should actually they put for this particular product? And then uh, in order for them to offer the product to the end user, to the customer, they have to actually distribute. So now uh, distribute using lorry, for example. And then uh, of course, uh, in order to make, sure, uh, to make sure that everybody knows about the product, they have to do advertisement. Okay, so now there are many ways to advertise. Uh, not necessarily newspaper. I don't think people read newspaper anymore nowadays. Okay, so we can um, look the advertisement on uh, social media, for example, Instagram, okay, on TV, uh, perhaps we listen to radio, okay, and then uh, perhaps they also will do some sales promotion, right, uh, giving discounts, offers. So all these activities are basically referring um, all activities, uh, marketing activities, okay. All right, uh, so uh, somebody uh, will be thinking why marketing is critical for entrepreneurs, okay? So entrepreneurs, like mentioned just now, um, that the person must be brave, okay? Must be trusted, um, and then helping other people. Uh, taqwa, and then has belief, all right? So basically, um, for any entrepreneurs, uh, there's no business without a customer. You imagine um, any business, I, I cannot imagine any business without a customer. So I think without a customer, so it's, it's good that the business closed down. Okay, so now during the pandemic, what happened to all the shops when there's no customer? Okay, so uh, in Malaysia, uh, numbers of um, number of businesses that have to close down keep on increasing because, um, because no customers actually go to, uh, to the premise. Okay, so that's why in marketing, um, for entrepreneurs, marketing is very, very important. And um, for entrepreneurs, acquiring and retaining customers is at the core of marketing. What does it mean is that, what does it mean by acquiring and retaining customers? Uh, it really is to the first bullet. Okay, so we know in businesses, we need customers. Okay, so if we don't have, we don't acquire and also our customers keep on running away. So definitely we will have no business. So that's why uh, entrepreneurs, they, they involve uh, a lot in marketing activities. Okay, for example, they have to create the offer. 
what a product or services that they want to give to customer. They have to set the price, okay, whether they want to use what kind of pricing strategy. And then they have to take the offer to the, uh, to the market, how to distribute, all right? Uh, whether uh, they want to sell it online or um, they have to put it somewhere in the premise, okay? And also they have to tell the market about the offer. So entrepreneurs, they involved with all these activities, okay? And all these activities reflect marketing activities. And um, so um, I'll just like to share a bit about today's marketing practices, okay? So most of the examples here are from Malaysia, uh, but never mind, I think you also know about some of the examples here given um, and uh, from uh, other side of the world, okay? So look at the first advertisement, okay? This one is by Reebok, okay? Everybody knows Reebok, okay? Um, so Reebok uh, produce uh, sports um, equipment and then um, like shoes, t-shirt, okay. And then uh, you see the tagline, they, they put that cheat on your girlfriend, not on your workout, okay. So for, it, it seems that um, this advertisement encouraging people to cheat on girlfriend, but not on your workout. I think some of you here are very hardcore in terms of doing workout. So this is the tagline given by Reebok. Um, so, okay, uh, just just uh, just look at all the examples first, okay? And then, uh, how about this? Okay, now it's already three something here in Malaysia, and I guess there is about two something in the afternoon. So if you had your lunch, uh, perhaps you'll be thinking of having the burger on your left, and then when you receive. Uh, you go jack or you for here in Malaysia grab and then the moment you see the burger in reality is like this uh, sloppy burger and then not as good as the one advertised okay <laughs> all right and then this one is about the recent one not recent uh, uh, last few months um, this one artist celebrity in Malaysia quite famous I, I don't know whether you all know Nilofa Okay, so she's an actress, she's a host, and she also uh, an entrepreneur. So she come up with this um, product named uh, Banil, uh, Banana Milk Nilofa, okay, uh, on her name. And then she claimed that this milk is basically very nutrition, nutritious and then can uh, uh, remove toxic waste and then uh, can control insulin. So she claimed so many things. But then if you see in this um, uh, comment by, by uh, the customer, uh, the comment here is that it's false advertising. Okay, if I can um, translate here, it says that in the nutrition label, it mentioned, uh, it did not mention at all um, that the ingredient contains uh, fiber. So how this milk can help to remove toxic or waste from body and no ingredient inside the milk that can help to control insulin production. So perhaps in the first place, uh, this Nilofa, banana milk Nilofa claim that it can actually remove toxic waste and then um, can, uh, can actually uh, control the insulin. But when look at the ingredient, nothing, not, none of the ingredient can help those things, okay? Uh, next one, uh, another one, if you can see here, Gula turun dalam masa singkat. Okay, for those diabetic patient, when they see this, definitely they will want uh, this young herbs. Okay, so it's over claim. Uh, this one is interesting. Ah, okay, <laughs> supplement that actually can can add somebody's height. Okay, let's say now I'm 160 because I want to be a model, so I drink this one. I can actually uh, become uh, maybe 165 centimeter, for example. Okay, so this is another advertisement in Malaysia. Okay, and ha, huh, this one. Okay, yeah. the moment I look at this in advertisement, I'll be thinking, oh, my grandma, uh. or anybody wants this. Look, within 60 minutes, in an hour, perhaps when I, if I put on this cream, when I started, by the end of this session, I will look at uh, like like the, the person on, on the left. Okay, okay. And uh, do get another example. This one is not from Malaysia, the last two example. Seven up. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, a baby, not even a kid, drinking seven up. 
<laughs> All right, so I do not know anybody, uh, a rational mom will actually give seven up to her or uh, to her uh, baby. So, and they claim that uh, why we have the youngest customers in the business, they are proud to say that seven up is suitable for baby. All right, so um, you if there are so many examples, okay, uh, in terms of marketing practices, uh, in terms of advertising, the product that they produce. So uh, there's one researcher, Muhammad A. Al-Buri, in 2005 mentioned that there is a need uh, to change the current market trends and introduce a new technique which constitute marketing practices based on Islamic ethics and social culture. Okay, so coming back to the characteristic of Muslim uh, entrepreneur. All right, so now we have seen uh, so many marketing practices that are actually against what been been taught by Islam. Okay, in fact, uh, in Quran, this one is Surah Al-Baqarah, it mentioned that uh, the translation, O oh, you uh, who believe, enter perfectly in Islam by obeying all the rules and regulations of the Islam religion, Islamic religion, and follow not the footstep of shaitan, verily he is to you a plain enemy. So what actually, um, the point from, from this screen, uh, from this slide, basically, uh, we have seen so many marketing practices. Uh, which actually against what we believe in Islam. In fact, um, okay, what I'm going to share today is basically oh, not everything, but it's just perhaps 0.001% uh, of uh, Islamic teaching in terms of marketing. Okay. All right. Uh, in general, uh, when we talk about marketing, okay, from Islamic perspective, these are some of the principles that can be applied. Okay, the first one is that speak the truth in all communication. Okay, speaking um, just like somebody mentioned just now, um, when we um, as an entrepreneur, there must be some, there must be some, uh, someone who can be trusted. Okay, so when they communicate, they communicate with the customer. So they have to speak the truth. They have to be true in terms of uh, telling uh, the content of the, the product, for example, uh, and then what they claim the product can do, right? So that one is the first one in terms of the principles that they can apply to marketing. Second one is sincere, okay? Sincere in meeting consumers' need and satisfying them, okay? Uh, what does it mean by sincere here is that uh, no hidden agenda. Okay, if we look at a uh, salesperson, all right? So sometimes you are you will be mesmerized with all these salesperson when they talk. All right, because uh, they will actually promise you stars and moons, right? Uh, but um, but perhaps maybe they have some hidden agenda. Maybe they want to get commission, all right? So um, for any salesperson, they must make sure that they are sincere in terms of uh, meeting the consumer's need and satisfying them, all right? So that one is the second one. The third one is that uh, when we talk about managing the resources for the betterment and society and surrounding environment, okay? So um, we have to, um, uh, entrepreneurs, okay? They must manage the resources carefully, okay? That, or else, um, uh, if we look around us, what happened now? Um, we, we, we can see people cut trees every day and then people um, uh, kill animals just to get the skin, for example, or to get the trunk, elephant trunk, for example. And then uh, they, they, they cut trees so to build factory and then you can see wastages, air quality, um, air pollution. All right. So entrepreneurs, they, they want to make profit, but they have to make sure that all the activities that they do will actually, um, they, they will actually look after the, the environment as well, okay? Another one is that uh, for entrepreneurs, in entrepreneurs, uh, they have to regard all Muslims as brothers and sisters, okay? Uh, this one is very relevant um, during this COVID-19. As we can see, so many, so many businesses, they, they cannot sustain because no customers and then uh, and, and, and everybody, uh, because of that, um, you can see that uh, people lost their job, all right? So um, yesterday, I just received um, uh, this uh, video, somebody forwarded to me. So this one is in, a, uh, in an incident that happened in Malaysia, uh, not far from my place. Okay, so this person actually opens a stall, 
All right. And then uh, because now people are struggling to get money, to get income. So this young girl, uh, I think about 20, early 20s, started a new business. Okay. Open a stall and then try to sell. I can't remember. Kuih, for example. Okay. And then what happened after she set up her stall, suddenly somebody come and then mm. just destroy everything. Okay. Uh, because uh, the person who destroyed the stall believe that this girl is basically a competitor to her. Mm. So I think that is uh, so sad to know about this because uh, rezeki is not from anybody. Rezeki comes from Allah. Okay, but if they treat each other like brothers and sisters, they should be helping each other, not destroying other people. Okay. Next one is science and knowledge. Okay, how uh, use um, in, in, in marketing, we have to use science and also knowledge in producing better products, okay? Now, if you can see, there's so many good products that can help us uh, to perform our ibadah better. Okay, example, uh, the Quran apps, okay? Now, you go anywhere, you carry your phone, and then you can, you can read Quran, for example. So, I think this is the science and technology has helped us to, to perform uh, better in terms of our ibadah. Uh, and then, in terms of our daily life, okay, like phone, all right? Those days, we only can SMS and also call people. But now, you just tell me what you cannot do with your phone. Okay, you even can listen to my lecture through your phone. You can, uh, you can buy anything. You can Gojek. You can ask for uh, help to, 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 um, to deliver your product from one place to another place. You can actually chat with your friends, your families. You can check your email. You can do your work. Okay, so with all this um, science and knowledge actually help us, uh, help the entrepreneurs to come up with a better product. Okay. And another one is basically must be fair in all dealings with stakeholders and the, and the execution of the marketing needs. Okay, they have to be very fair um, in whatever marketing activities that they are doing. They are not, not actually um, uh, uh, destroying other people's business, for example, or they, they want profit until they have forgotten about what has been laid out in, in Islam. Okay. Okay, so now um, I'll go one by one in terms of the marketing mix and then what is expected basically um, and what an, a Muslim entrepreneur should do in terms of their marketing, okay? So first one is about product, okay? Uh, if you learn uh, from the conventional marketing, we have many types of uh, product like shopping product, luxury product, okay? But from Islam, uh, if we look, um, there are three, the, the categories of product can be divided into three. Okay, first one is daruriyah, uh, which is necessary for our life. Uh, like we need food, we need um, uh, clothing, uh, and then we need shelter. So all these are necessaries, okay? And then hajia, hajia is something uh, for comfortable. Okay, for comfort, for example, we need lodging. Okay, if we travel, um, let's say I go to Georgia and then um, I, I need a place to stay so I can um, actually get um, stay one night in, in, in hotel, for example. Tasinia, it will be beautification. All right, um, so um, I want, uh, example, uh, if I want delicious food and then well furnished homes fine clothing, or else um, you also can call it as luxury goods, okay? So these are the categories of products available in the market. Uh, and uh, as entrepreneur, they have to think, um, when they come out and also do offering, uh, they have to think a lot about uh, many aspects, okay? Not only about, okay, uh, I think consumer wants this, so I, I just produce this. Okay, so as an entrepreneur, they have to think about the products that they want to produce, all right? Uh, let's say they want to produce food. They have to make sure that the ingredient used is halal and there's no harm uh, if anybody takes that, that particular food. And then uh, it will bring uh, maslaha or uh, benefit to the public. Okay, for example, um, sometimes nowadays, if you look at certain food, when you look the ingredient, you, you cannot tell what ingredient they have with E and then P and then Zantam and Distam and what gum, all right? So uh, as entrepreneur, 
they, they must know what exactly they are producing. All right, it's halal. And now um, uh, the entrepreneurs not only promoting halal, but halalan tayiban. Okay, it has to be clean. All right. Uh, sometimes when we see the product is, is looks nice, but we do not know how it has been produced. Okay, next one is production process. Okay, entrepreneurs, they have to think about how they process uh, their, their product. Okay, in terms of logistics how actually they transfer the product from um, from uh, the factory to the customer okay in terms of the logistic uh, let's say if somebody runs a restaurant all right so uh, if let's say uh, they they uh, for example in malaysia uh, if you go to um, uh, klia the international airport okay they get this halal certification for the kitchen Right, but at the same time, uh, KLIA also uh, acknowledge that they have uh, non-Muslim customers, so they they have to do they have to um, uh, they have to serve beer and non uh, all alcoholic uh, beverages. Okay, so what they do is basically for for the kitchen, a halal kitchen is separated from the bar. All right, so that one is just an example in terms of production process. Um, other than that, uh, entrepreneurs also must make sure that um, they they use um, legal uh, legal labor instead of illegal labor. For example, cheap labor because they know kids they don't know nothing. That's why they just hire kids. Okay, so all this um, uh, decision must be made by entrepreneur, and they have to make sure that. Uh, whatever decision that they make in terms of production process, they have to make sure that uh, it is halal and then it is legal, all right? Uh, the third point here in terms of product decision is about product safety, all right? What does it mean by product safety? Okay, product safety is basically when they come up with a product, the product, they must make sure that the product is safe to be consumed, all right? Um, and or for example, if toys, for kids, all right. Uh, so they they will not hurt uh, themselves if they play with a toy. Uh, in fact, uh, we we've heard and also we have seen so many car manufacturers recall the cars from the car owners because something wrong or faulty with the engine, with the tires. Okay. So basically, entrepreneurs they have to think about the product safety, all right. Other than that, uh, another one is brand names. Okay. Brand names are very important, okay, because that is what uh, brand names will determine whether your brand um, is basically uh, the first brand name that will appear in uh, the consumer's mind. Okay, for example, if we talk about beverages, what is the first brand name that comes into your mind? Coca-Cola maybe, Pepsi maybe, all right? So uh, there's some guidelines in terms of uh, brand names whether the brand names um, memorable, uh, whether it is easy to, uh, to remember, whether uh, it is unique. And then um, for Muslims product, uh, it should foster positive brand. Um, I, I just like to share with you uh, the latest development in Malaysia. I don't know, maybe after this in Indonesia, you can share your, your experience and also what is happening there. Uh, normally, for brand, you will have good names. For example, um, um, uh, positive names. Okay, but lately, uh, what I can see is that the the brand names or the business owners will give um, so called negative brand names. For example, sambal malas, sambal, uh, and then malas lazy. Okay. Um, so uh, I think um, that is interesting because um, because normally we will uh, we will prefer brands that is positive in terms of the name and looks appealing, but now sambal malas uh, perhaps because uh, the business owner understand that now consumers are quite busy that's why they put sambal malas so that you don't have to uh, use blender you can immediately eat the sambal. Uh, so I'm not so sure, perhaps you can share your, your opinions and thoughts about this, okay? And then uh, brand names also, uh, one of the criteria is that uh, there's no duplication, okay? So because 
consumer they will think about your brand so what if another another business also come out with the same brand so it will just confuse the consumer okay next one is in terms of the material use right uh, business owners entrepreneurs they have to think about the materials okay let's say um uh, in terms of producing food Okay, preparing food, they must make sure uh, the sauces, um, halal food, uh, and then there's no harm. Okay, uh, and then uh, it is not um, tested on animal. Okay, uh, and then not exploiting um, the environment. Okay, so these are the things that should be considered under product decision. Okay, um, and then another one is that... Um, impact on consumers, environment, and society. I think this is very important for entrepreneurs. When they come up with certain product, they have to think how it will impact the consumers. Okay, uh, now we can see uh, there are so many um, innovative products coming out from, um, from, the, the, from the market. Okay, but what is more important is basically that the product will give, um, will increase the productivity of the consumer. All right, and it will actually not destroy the environment and also it can build the society. So that one is very crucial in terms of what kind of product decision that entrepreneurs should, uh, should do. Okay, so that one is the first piece. We talk about product. Uh, entrepreneurs, any businesses, uh, these are the decisions that they have to make, um, like, like being discussed just now. Okay, next one is promotion. Okay, I think uh, lots of people would think about marketing and promotion, advertising and marketing. Okay, so again, um, promotion or advertising uh, is basically part of marketing mix. Okay, so the marketing mix here are four: uh, the product. Now we go to promotion. Later we go to place and also price. Okay. So uh, Anwar and Said mentioned in 1996, promotion activities benefits consumer by providing information about the availability of products, the products benefits, and it promotes pro economic progress and social development of a society. Okay, so uh, we have promotion thanks to promotion because of promotion we know that oh that 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 kind of product is available in the market. Okay, so uh, and that kind of product will benefit us in terms of efficiency, our productivity. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm just giving uh, an example. Those days, our mom, they have to actually tumbuk sambal. Okay, nowadays, they don't use tumbuk sambal. Okay, we have blender. Within uh, seconds, we can get our sambal. I know some of you will be will be telling me that it's not authentic if you use blender but what i'm trying to say here is that because of this product it helps us to uh to be more productive okay instead of tumbuk sambal for half an hour maybe but now in just a um, few seconds you can get your sambal ready okay um what is the purpose of having this pro uh, promotion okay according to kotler and keller 2007 Okay, uh, first increase product awareness, right? Uh, entrepreneurs, they will use this uh, promotion to increase product awareness. Perhaps uh, you do not know about product A, but because of promotion, now you know about product A. So that's the purpose of having this um, uh, promotion. And then second one is persuade people to purchase, right? Sometimes... Um, you when you you don't feel that you need to buy certain thing uh, but because you saw the advertisement then you feel that oh okay i think i want to buy this okay uh, for me uh, i'm um for example if you watch tv tv commercial you see kfc you see advertisement on TV about a product that can make you more beautiful, for example. Okay, so you will be persuaded to buy and convinced to buy uh, that particular product. Okay, and remind people that the product exists. Okay, so uh, if you can see in the market, there's certain product that has been in the market for a number of years. Not yesterday, not last year, not the year before, but it has been in the market for almost 100 years. Okay, so this kind of company, what they will do and uh, why they still promote their product is that they want to remind people that, hey, look, uh, there are so many products, uh, but we are still here to um, and offering the same product. 
uh, example like Nescafe. Okay, there are so many brands of coffee now, but Nescafe uh, in Malaysia exists for more than 100 years, 50 years. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think more than 50 years. Okay, so, but they still come out with advertisement, they still have promotion because they want to remind everybody that their product still exists. Okay, I'll just give you some example here uh, how um, uh, Islamic uh, financial institution can use this promotion to promote their product. Okay, let's say the first one. This one is from Zakat Selangor. Uh, it's a zakat institution that collects zakat uh, in Selangor, one of the state in Malaysia. Okay, so if you can see here, it mentioned that zakat itu ringan. Zakat is easy to perform. All right, it's about 2.5%. But it mentioned here, berat pahalanya. Uh, okay, even though it's light, okay, uh, but uh, inshallah it will be rewarded. All right, so, uh, this is how uh, zakat Selangor uh, use promotion to to uh, create awareness among people among Muslims specifically uh, in terms of zakat. Okay, so this one is uh, example from my university. All right, uh, due to uh, this pandemic, many students they have to go back to their hometown and then they have to learn from their house from their home. Okay, and not everybody are fortunate to have their own laptop, for example, or PC at home, and perhaps the network uh, is not that good. Okay, because of that, uh, because of that, um, uh, our university has um, do this crowdfunding, um, whereby uh, crowdfund for uh, laptops, uh, for all these unfortunate punya student, unfortunate students, okay? So uh, they aim to get 50,000 ringgit Malaysia. Okay, so they use this uh, promotion to invite people to donate, all right? And uh, this is like a reminder, okay? Post Malaysia is um, in Malaysia for for post. Um, so this this is basically um, an advertisement during Hari Raya, during Eid. Okay, sudahkah anda menunaikan zakat fitrah? It's just like reminding people that, hey, look, have you performed this? Or um, in terms of uh, zakat fitrah in, in this example given. Okay, so uh, you can see that promotion is, is important, not only for entrepreneurs, but uh, many zakat institution, many uh, Islamic institution. Okay, like the examples that I give you, uh, we can use all these promotion um, as a tool um, to, to encourage people to donate, for example, to create awareness about zakat, uh, to remind people about doing good things. Okay. All right, uh, I'll just skip this one. Okay, in terms of promotional mix, okay, we talk about promotion. There are many tools for promotion, all right? So one is personal selling, advertising, public relations, sales promotion, and also direct marketing. Okay, so these are the major promotional tools. All right. Uh, okay, we go one by one, but I'll just briefly um, uh, discuss about each uh, marketing tool. Sorry, a promotional tool. Okay, first one is uh, personal selling. Okay, personal selling is salesperson. Is a one-to-one -one communication between seller and also prospective purchaser. Okay, so uh, it generates direct contact with prospects and customers. But uh, this form of promotion is the most expensive one. Why? Because um, the salesperson must go and meet the prospect um, face to face individually. Okay, like personal meetings. They have to do emails, telemarketing. So uh, this is one of the tools used in marketing, in promotion, but it is quite costly, okay? Um, that is personal selling. Okay, second one, uh, like I mentioned, people always thought about uh, advertising and marketing, marketing and advertising. So advertising is, uh, is a bit different from personal selling, whereby it is a non-personal promotion. Okay, advertisement like you watch on TV, Okay, it's non-personal promotion because it is a blast for everybody, for mass, for public. Okay, and you cannot actually speak uh, with the advertiser at the same time. Okay, like personal selling, 
you can speak to the salesperson, you can ask the salesperson, all right, and the salesperson can give you feedback there and there, all right. But advertising has been used a lot, all right. So uh, they they and most companies they pay to promote ideas, goods, services in a variety of media outlets, TV, um, and then you can listen from the radio, billboards. Um, and then uh, newspaper, all right. Uh, now uh, people advertise everything on Facebook, Instagram, all right. So it engages in one way communication uh, because there's no two way communication uh, if we talk about advertising as compared to salesperson. Okay, uh, example here magazines, newspapers, television, websites, city buses. And now, even if you watch YouTube, YouTube, all right, the first few seconds, definitely advertisement. Um, and um, even when when you watch the whole film, for example, on YouTube, in between, there'll be uh, advertisement as well. Okay. Okay. The third one is direct marketing. Okay. Direct marketing here is uh, targeted marketing um, to a group of prospects and customer rather than mass audience. Okay. So perhaps you are in mailing list uh, of certain company. Okay. Uh, so you will be getting this uh, bulletin every month and that email, for example, and social media, if you follow this um, uh, certain brand, for example, so you will get, you can claim for discounts from that uh, by following that social media or that um, a company. Okay, and then sales promotion. I think this is the one that everybody likes. Okay, so sales promotion here, uh, basically to increase sales, um, inform potential customers about new product, and then uh, create a positive business or corporate image. Okay, uh, why I like sales promotion? I think everybody likes sales promotion uh, because you like coupons. We like coupons. Product samples, buy one free, buy one free one is um, discounts. Okay, uh, you get samples. Um, all right, so that one is about sales promotion. And uh, another one is public relations. Uh, public relations here, uh, company they announce news. All right, um, about the company event, for example, they make announcement about the company's performance, the revenues, the earnings, achievement by the employees. Okay, uh, and um, some businesses they use this public relation uh, so that they can tell everybody that to the public, especially that the company also is doing good things, like they donate to hospital, they donate to a good cause. Uh, or they donate some something, or they support uh, certain certain event. Okay, so that one is public relations. Okay, so uh, we we have seen so many uh, promotional tools used by companies, and what actually um, the guide for uh, for entrepreneurs in terms of promotion. What are the things that they have to follow? Okay, uh, first one is that encourage good deeds. Okay, what does it mean by encourage good deeds? Um, here, uh, for entrepreneurs, okay, uh, they can use this platform to encourage good deeds. Okay, uh, the example given just now, for example, uh, we we want people or we want to encourage, we want to encourage people to sedekah, to donate, for example. Okay, and then help the poor people. So promotion uh, is not only used um, to to tell the world that. Okay, look, uh, we have new product, but also we use promotional tools um, to encourage people to do good things, all right? Um, help, um, help the poor people, even during the COVID-19, um, this pandemic, you, you can see that people use promotion, different promotional tools to encourage people to do good things, all right? Or to tell other people that you have, for example, you, you have to look after each other, make sure you put on your mask, for example. Okay, so that one is about uh, promotion, encourage good deeds. Okay, second one is in terms of promotion, whether you use advertisement, uh, personal selling, uh, public relation, uh, entrepreneurs must make sure that they, they observe the morale in advertising. 
Okay, I've shown you and shared with you some of the advertisement which really crack your head. Like, really, is that an advertisement? They really make overclaim um, and then false statement, all right? And they exploit women uh, in the advertisement. So all this uh, should not be in the advertisement. Okay, uh, they should not exploit women. They don't make false statement. They don't exaggerate, right? Um, I've seen uh, one advertisement here in Malaysia. They, they mention as a tagline, ini bukan janji, ini pasti. So if you look at the, the tagline, it says that this is not a promise, but this is something sure, All right? So who can be very sure about certain things, okay? So that one is basically in terms of the statement used in the advertisement. Okay, what else? Uh, truthful, no fraud, uh, fraud, and then concealment of facts. Okay, sometimes they don't really release uh, the truth. Okay, because they want people to get excited. That's why they just mentioned um, that um, this is free. Okay, but you have to read down there that free only if you purchase more than blah, blah, blah and only applicable during these days, okay? So they're not being true uh, or they, they actually hide the fact, right? Uh, and then in terms of promotion, it should be mutual consent. They don't actually force people to buy, okay? Uh, so it's consumer who actually wants to buy. And then emphasize on fulfill, fulfilling the promise. Okay, salesperson, like men you mentioned just now, um, we, we have this uh, thinking that uh, the, when the sales, sometimes the salesperson, they, they talk nicely to you, uh, all these lovely words they use because they, and they promise you stars and moon because, uh, but they, they forgot to actually fulfill the promise. Okay, before you buy certain thing from that salesperson, the person will say, okay, uh, I will get it delivered by tomorrow. Uh, I'll make sure this and that you will get first uh, first class service. But uh, at the end, once you purchase the, the product, even if you want to call them to get maintenance service, that also a problem. Okay, so as entrepreneurs who are concerned about all this, they must make sure that they, they try their heart, their, their, their best to actually fulfill the promise. Okay, justice and fairness. In terms of promotion, they must make sure this one is fair. Okay, not only, for example, they, they have this discount uh, for everybody, not only for their family members. Okay, if they say this is only, um, this is applicable to everybody, so it should be justice and also fair. And don't overclaim. All right, in promotion, uh, make sure that um, they don't overclaim. For example, it, it states there that 100% sure it will cure your disease, right? There are so many uh, examples of that kind of advertisement lately that we have seen. Okay, so all this basically contradicting with what we know about uh, marketing, uh, what Islam actually taught us in terms of doing business, all right? Okay, uh, okay we still have time, right? Uh, next one is place. Okay, another uh, mix, uh, marketing mix, place. We know already about our product um, and then we know how to promote uh, our, our product and then place. Place here is basically where you want to distribute um, your, your product, okay? So, for example, if you are selling uh, toothpaste, right? So, you, the place that you want to sell can be in the hypermarket, can be in the retailer, all right, retail, uh, retail shop. All right, so a um, few things that entrepreneurs must observe whether they're doing it right or not is that uh, when they want to transport the, pro the product, for example, they must make sure that the weight and measures are correct. Okay, they do not cheat or lie to the, to the business partners. Okay, uh, second one is about hoarding. Hoarding here means that uh, for example, during COVID, okay, when people panicking to buy things, especially groceries, uh, some businesses, they take advantage whereby they, they keep all the stocks, okay, and they are not selling it to the consumer because they know that the price will go up. 
So the moment the price go up, then only they will sell. Okay, so these are the things which is prohibited. Um, other than hoarding, principle of accountability. All right, so for those uh for those uh distributors they have to be accountable with the product that they carry and then truth and honesty um as a distributor uh, they must does they must make sure that they are honest they must tell the truth okay and uh the the concept of brotherhood okay uh, helping each other uh for entrepreneurs okay sometimes they have distributors there are so many distributors Okay, so they, among the distributors, they must have this brotherhood concept. Uh, brotherhood concept means um, if you are in, in trouble, I will help you. Um, when when I'm, uh, I'm in uh, a good condition, so perhaps I can share my happiness with everybody. So that one is basically what is expected uh, for uh, Muslim entrepreneurs. Okay. Okay, the last part is price. I think this is also interesting in, and also plays very crucial uh, piece uh, in terms of uh, marketing mix in, uh, in, uh, in marketing uh, because um, like it or not, most of the time we'll be looking at price, okay? Um, whether the price, um, one of the contributing factor, whether we want to buy or not, okay? Okay, uh, Islam prohibits the following pricing practices. Okay, maybe you have heard about this uh, or you have experienced it. Uh, price gouging. What is price gouging? Okay, remember when the pandemic started? Okay, last year. Uh, everybody was looking for hand sanitizer, uh, all these cleaning, uh, cleaning products, uh, hand gloves, masks. Okay, that time, uh, price coaching here, basically sellers, they increases, increases the price uh, to a level which is uh, not considered uh, fair. Okay, for example, if you look at this, this is just wipes. This one is in, in US. Uh, they charge $133. $133, about 400 ringgit is about uh, 1 million plus rupiah just for wipes okay so it doesn't make sense at all so islam prohibits this type of uh, pricing strategies so as a muslim entrepreneurs they have to know that uh, of course they want to have this profit maximization but not to the expense of uh, other people um, by by increasing under the price unnecessarily they, they try to take advantage okay price fixing uh, if you look at the cartoon here, price fixing here is that basically agreement between two companies um, and then uh, they agree that uh, they will fix certain amount so that um, so that is the uh, the amount that they will sell it to other other people. Let's say um, uh, in the industry of uh, toothpaste or clothing, okay, we have three players. I'm just assuming three players, okay? Uh, three companies so this company they they make an agreement they say okay never mind uh, everybody must sell it at this price this cost um 20 ringgit or uh, i would say 100000 rupiah okay uh, so that uh, everybody will buy it uh, everybody must buy at 100000 100, rupiah okay so that uh, they if you see the dialogue here is that Let's raise our prices by 20% from next month. Okay. And then uh, then we don't have to fight to make more money. Great idea. So basically, these three people they agree to increase the price uh, so that they can make more money. So this type of pricing also is prohibited. Okay, next one is prohibition of deception. I think this is normal. I think I've got cheated before. I don't know about you. All right. Um it, Let's say this, this example. On Monday, they put it as $29, $30. Okay. And then on Friday, they, they show it that there's, there was a, a price slash. Before was $39.99, but now it's $29.99. So this is prohibition of um, deception. Um, Islam uh, uh, prohibits this kind of pricing strategy. Okay. 
Next one is uh, when we talk about predatory. Okay, predatory here is that uh, they they actually cut the price uh, to the extent that other competitors uh, they they cannot actually beat that price, so that uh, they become the monopoly in that uh, in that industry. All right, and um, monopoly. All right, you know that uh, you are the only one in the industry. And monopoly is not allowed because if you see the reason why monopolies are bad for an economy, okay, the first one is that they can set any price they choose. For a monopoly, for example, you just imagine in this world, there's only um, one company that produces the vaccine. Okay, now everybody is looking for that vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, so they can actually set any price if let's say there's only one uh, manufacturer. Okay. And um, if there's only mon monopoly is also prohibited because they can supply inferior products, right? Because they know they're the only one who supply the product. So they will just uh, offer whatever product that not necessarily be good. It can be very bad, but uh, because there's no, because as consumer, we cannot go to any other place. So uh, they, we just buy from this monopoly. Okay, they lose any incentive to innovate, right? Because they are the monopoly. So they are very comfortable with the situation. They know that people will buy from them. So they don't, in, they don't bother to actually um, innovate. All right, and then the fourth one is that it can also create inflation, right? Because they will just increase the price, All right? Uh, and then hoarding, okay? Uh, just now we we talk about in terms of distribution, people will hoard because they want to uh, they they keep all the stocks. They don't sell it because they they expect the price will go up in future. Okay, this example I got from uh, Google about this guy. He he keeps all this stock on hand sanitizer, cleaning uh, cleaning products because he expect that um, the price will go up in future. Okay, so this one is also prohibited in Islam. Okay, uh, so I have covered very much on the four P's and also what is expected uh, from Islam. There are many more actually. Uh, this one is just um, the, the, the minimum, uh, minimum requirement uh, if for any entrepreneurs um, when, when they do marketing activities, all right? So, um, Islamic marketing is gaining momentum in the development of marketing knowledge and is practical to business and customer is in undeniably uh, significant. Okay, so uh, if let's say all the entrepreneurs, okay, they follow what actually Islam has taught in terms of doing business, so as a customer, we will not be cheated. Okay, we can get the benefit, we will not be harmed. The product that we use um, will benefit us. Okay, uh, not only uh, to the human being, but also to the environment. Um, and then it can increase the productivity. It can actually um, uh, can, can uh, allow the economy to grow, to grow, all right? So that one is basically um, the advantage for in, uh, Muslim entrepreneurs if they follow what has been taught uh, in Islam in terms of doing business, okay? So, um, in terms of this Islamic marketing, all right, or doing business uh, based on what actually been taught in, in Islam, uh, many practitioners, okay, and also academic, uh, academicians, they are now interested to know more about Islamic marketing, okay. Uh, this, this um, we have seen so many marketing practices which are actually against uh, what is, has been taught. Uh, in Islam. So now, um, Alhamdulillah, I can see that um, entrepreneurs, they, they started to, uh, they started to market their product according to what has been taught in Islam. Okay. In fact, in Malaysia, okay, if you see this person, uh, he, he, he was um, Mufti, a uh, Mufti in Malaysia. Uh, and now he is one of the uh, minister uh, for religious affairs uh, in Malaysia. So he come up with this uh, nice um, uh, infographic, Hukum Menipu Untuk Tujuan Marketing. Okay? 
So um, it stated here, uh, riwayat At-Tamizi mentioned that peniaga jujur dan amanah akan bersama para Nabi Siddiqin dan juga para syah, uh, syahid. Okay, and also it mentioned here in hundred uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 275 um, whereby um, it mentioned here Allah telah menghalalkan, menghalalkan jual beli dan mengharamkan riba. Okay, so uh, it's already, um, it, it mentioned here some points marketing hukumnya harus. Okay, there's nothing haram about marketing. Alright, but it becomes haram if we do not follow what has been stated in Islam. Okay, uh, it mentioned also here is that penipuan adalah ditegah. You're not allowed to cheat people, especially in business. Okay, so this is very crucial. I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, some of the students in front of me plan to be an entrepreneur. Okay, so have this in mind. Uh, when you want to start your business, of course, you want to have profit profit maximization and Islam allows that but make sure that you have follow all the the thing has been taught in Islam okay so uh, kecelakaan besar bagi orang-orang yang berlaku curang whereby here those who um, they they will be punished basically for those who cheat cheat uh, other people okay and it's mentioned here the last one is that kejujuran dalam perniagaan adalah satu perkara yang tinggi ahlaknya Hingga disebutkan secara khusus kedudukan para peniaga di dalam syurga. It's been mentioned that for those uh, entrepreneurs who uh, who perform their business ethically, alright, they don't cheat, they make sure that the weighing is correct, they help each other, uh, and then um, they 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 inform uh, and also they don't hide things, they tell the truth. So uh, they they will be rewarded in the hereafter, okay. So I guess um, that's all my sharing for today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, again, it's just um, a bit of knowledge that I know on uh, Islamic marketing. So I hope you can also share your opinion and also your feedback, especially about the marketing practices now in Indonesia, okay. Thank you very much. Um, pass back. I pass back to Mr. Baru. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Doctor Doctor Sa Doctor Sadia. <laughs> Sorry, I remember this name. Doctor Sadia for your explanation regarding about the Islamic uh, product on marketing mix. So I think we have a lot of uh, question. Hopefully, because I'm only I got the two question to to Doctor Sadia. <laughs> okay, so so anyone else uh, for a student from a student, uh, do you have any question or discussion? Maybe you can ask to Dr. Sadia. So you can raise your hand uh, if you want to ask. Which one to ask the question? Who? Boleh, boleh. You can, you can, you can, you can speak in bahasa. Boleh cakap boleh, boleh. bahasa. Boleh, boleh cakap bahasa Indonesia. Boleh. Boleh. Nak boleh cakap bahasa Inggeris juga pun boleh. Tak apa. Boleh juga. So boleh, boleh. Siapa yang sekiranya ada student ni? Eh, eh budak-budak ni. Eh, <laughs> ayo, eh, budak-budak ni tanya semuanya. Tak tahu. Petang-petang. Eh. Ya, petang-petang ni. Ni hujan pun sini. Hujan oh, Malaysia, hujan. okay. No wonder. <laughs> Yeah, siapa yang mau tanya? Ayo. Uh, they are trying to digest whatever that I have said. <laughs> eh, ini budak-budak UM, UMY ni ya. Ini harus <laughs> tanya ni. Ini visiting professor. So so you have to ask about this issue because it's very interesting discussion. Siapa yang mau tanya? Silakan. Ayo. Okay, I think I, I, I will be the first. Okay. <laughs> I'll be okay. the first for the question. So, uh, so I still remember that. Uh, I think this question is based on my experience before because uh, in Indonesia, I think uh, customer, we very smart. I think not only in Indonesia, I see a lot of people in, in the world. Now we, we can we can select and we can choose the product when we want, when we want to buy. Okay. Uh, so especially we're talking about the halal 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 product, for example. So 
uh, this is based on my experience. Uh, I think in, in the end of 2019, I still remember that. I think uh, Wardah, uh, do mm -hmm. you know that, Dr. Wardah okay. Cosmetic? Uh -huh. uh, okay, Wardah Cosmetic is established a product uh, shampoo. So, so at the time uh, when I saw the price, the shampoo is very expensive. Mm. So, so my, my question is, uh, is it, uh, it, is there any, any, any influence or maybe is there any, any factor that can be uh, increase the price because of the halal? Mm. Or maybe the halal is uh, almost uh, expensive or maybe the halal is, uh, should be in cheap uh, the price, oh, I don't know. So what do you think about this? Doctor? That is the first question uh, because, uh, because the people want to, want to buy the halal product because they know, okay, I need product, but why the price is very expensive? It's better, I think it's not halal product, but it's very cheap. So this is talking about the price, okay. okay. So the, the, the second question is, is talking about, uh, I don't know, this is, can we, can we call that personal branding or personal selling? I don't know. Because the, today people, if want to sell their product, sometime they need the like people or we can call that ambassador. Okay. Uh, so for example, I need the people maybe uh, good looking. So I'm trying to sell in the Instagram so that people can interest with the, the product through these people. So uh, how's the Islamic uh, marketing or Islamic uh, product point of view, look at this uh, point, look at this uh, issue, talking about the personal, I don't know, this is talking about the personal branding or personal selling, I don't know. So okay. that's why uh, I think I need more your explanation from okay. you. Later. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the first question for the, for the two questions, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good questions. I think um, it's not only in Indonesia, everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now uh, you're talking about price and also halal, right? Um, and then some people would say that uh, if this is halal, why it is expensive? Um, okay, um, my, my view on this, okay, when we talk about halal, uh, we are not only talking about um, halal in terms of uh, it has been slaughtered, okay, and then there's no alcoholic, uh, alcoholic content ingredient, Okay, but it also must be clean. Okay, clean. All right. And um, there are many studies that show um, halal is one of the halal is one of the, the most important factor or the only factor uh, that people choose when they buy meat. Okay. Uh, so um, that's why, uh, especially because this research has been done in Western. So for Muslims there, uh, because uh, the 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 cost of producing halal meat can be a bit expensive, okay, uh, because they need to find somebody to slaughter the the halal meat, okay. But for Muslims, they are okay uh, to find uh, to pay that price because uh, what is more important is that to get halal uh, halal food to them. In fact, in Islam we are actually, uh, it is uh, compulsory for us to find halal food, mm -hmm. okay? But coming back to your question, why uh, Wardah example, right? Uh, they, they actually uh, put as a, a bit expensive, okay? Um, perhaps, okay, um, in, 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 uh, in terms of pricing strategy, um, there are two ways, okay? Uh, which is, um, this is legal basically, okay? Mm -hmm. One is penetrate. Okay, penetration, mm -hmm. uh, penetration, uh, and also another one is skimming, right? Mm -hmm. Perhaps maybe because they don't see many competitors are doing this uh, or producing halal shampoo, and they know the demand is there, right? That's why they use price skimming. They increase mm -hmm. a bit because they know they are unique. Not many people can actually produce, um, uh, produce halal, halal shampoo, for example. Okay, so that is the strategy that they use, um, uh, the price scheming, right? Um, so um, uh, from Islam, what I know, um, uh, any entrepreneurs, they are allowed to get, uh, to get profit, to make profit, okay? It's just that uh, not to the extent like the examples that I've given you just now, like ridiculously expensive for no reason, okay? Um, so that one is not, uh, is not allowed, okay? But... Um, in a situation where um, uh, products which is uh, which is new in the market, 
all right uh, some entrepreneurs they use this price scheming okay uh, because they know they are the first one and also they they want to make profit uh, out of it okay uh, again um, but uh, for for entrepreneurs if they know they are actually selling halal um, halal product and they have uh, what in their mind is that they want uh, people to use halal product with that the intention so i think uh, what is best for the entrepreneur is basically to sell it at a price which is affordable to everybody so that uh, their intention is, is, is good because they, they, they have produced halal product and they want people to use that halal product. Okay, so they are helping people to get halal product at a uh, so-called uh, affordable rate. Okay, so that one is in terms of price and also halal. Okay, uh, second one is ambassador. Uh, so a lot, I, I didn't touch uh, about ambassador here, uh, spokesperson, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, if we look in the marketing, many companies, they, they, many companies, they use this reference group. Okay, reference group, basically people that we look up, right? For example, um, most, most of the time, people, they, they will refer to family, friends, and celebrities, Okay, and celebrities. Okay, uh, there are some guides given uh, for companies that wants to use ambassador or spokesperson. Okay, one of it is that they have to make sure that there is a compatibility between the product that they produce and also the personality of the spokesperson. Okay, that's why if we look in uh, in, in in reality, okay, uh, let's say sports sportsmen, okay, Adidas, Nike. Uh, they will actually go for a spokesperson that um, that people can relate with their product. That's why they go for Ronald, Cristiano Ronaldo uh, and then uh, Nadal, for example, for tennis. Um, so because when the consumer look at uh, this type of product and then uh, the, the, the company use this kind of people like Nadal or Cristiano Ronaldo as the spokesperson. So immediately consumer will be thinking, oh, because they use this product, this product, uh, that's why uh, they, they become uh, a great sportsman, for example. Okay. And um, I think there's no harm of using this uh, reference group in mm -hmm. marketing. In fact, now in Malaysia, uh, because of this COVID-19, Okay, what we can see here uh, in terms of um, encouraging people to get vaccinated. I don't know in Indonesia because here in Malaysia, uh, there's quite a percentage of people who do not want to be vaccinated. Okay, so what the government has done is basically on, on TV, um, they, they have actually um, get all these uh, sportsmen, uh, in fact, religious uh, scholars, um, and then all the ministers, celebrities, singers, actors, or anybody who we can consider as reference group to, to talk a bit about vaccine and also encourage people to, to get vaccine. Uh, okay, so uh, because um, uh, I think we understand that uh, for any consumer, for any individual, there must be a group which they refer and they look up. For example, like um, uh, like uh, an individual, they they might be thinking that um, uh, religious scholars, okay, uh, those muftis um, or imam or kiai, uh, if they support this vaccine, so definitely um, the 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 people who look up at this um, imam kiai, they also will go and get themselves registered for vaccination. So um, it is uh, it is a norm and also um, nothing wrong to use this spokesperson um, as long the spokesperson um, again not actually uh, uh, hiding any any um, or not hiding any facts and tell the truth when they actually no. promote the product uh, they have to be sincere uh, in terms of promoting the product yeah, yeah it has to be sincere that's the point in it you yeah. have to be sincere yes <clears throat> Okay, so it's mean that like uh, you know I, I think I think uh, nowadays people uh, uh, easily to get uh, the product through online. So at the same time uh, they are using Instagram to sell their product. Mm -hmm. So they need the celebgram, celebrities Instagram. So mm. so celebgram is I think quite uh, interesting because 
I think uh, this is like side, can can be side job, side uh, no, side job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> side income. Uh, because of that, I think uh, my student also asking me talking about this. Uh, uh, Mr. Brahul, uh, would you tell me about uh, Islamic point of view, Islamic or the Islamic point of view about a uh, celebram? Because with sometimes, uh, some sometimes the the product uh, should be explained by. Uh, truth otherwise is make uh, difficult people to okay i think is is very harmful the product so no need to sell this product i think so that's why yeah. okay uh, uh this one um when when company company now they, they are very clever mm -hmm. uh whereby they will get uh influencer to promote mm -hmm. their product celebrities mm -hmm. or sportsmen or somebody what we call as influencer nowadays mm -hmm. okay but uh, it's all it all depends on the influencer. Okay, I've met one influencer. Uh, she is very sincere. Uh, he's an make makeup artist basically. Okay, but uh, everybody looks up um, her comment, her her point of view, mm -hmm. uh, her recommendation. Okay, mm -hmm. so I asked her personally. I said, uh, "You have to promote lots of product. Do you really, really uh, yes. use and also tell the truth?" And then uh, she said, this is very challenging for me because um, if she feels that the product is good, she will definitely promote uh, on her Instagram. But uh, or else she will tell the, the company that she will not um, actually promote because she doesn't actually believe in that product. product. So um, what, what, uh, what I can see from this influencer is basically uh, she believes that um, she will do uh, things if she believes that product will not harm the, the consumer because she knows that other people is uh, referring to her. So she wants to give honest comment, good review so that uh, it will benefit everybody, not only for her because she will get commission definitely. But then uh, if she feels that the product is no good for anybody, so she will not promote that product. Okay, so again, uh, this influencer also, they have, they have to play their role. Uh, be honest, sincere, and then... Um, they don't actually hide anything from the consumer. Uh, I know uh, it's very challenging, especially if if they are being paid with commission, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I so think how's the, most... the progress in Indonesia in terms of this influencer? <laughs> yeah. Who are the influencers, famous influencers now? Oh, oh Hatta Alin, Hatta Alintar. <laughs> Halinda? Oh, okay. I have Atta, to Halilinta. Do you know this? I don't know. Atta Halilinta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm not sure this. Okay. So uh, the meaning is, uh, it, it's been that uh, the influencer should be tell the truth, the yeah. product. Okay. Yeah. That is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no hiding about the effect. So mm -hmm. we have to tell the truth about the product. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes they overclaim some some companies, mm -hmm. okay? Some this some of the influencers, uh, because they really want to get commission, mm -hmm. okay? So they overclaim certain things. But uh, at the end, uh, like you mentioned just now, now consumers they are very knowledgeable, okay? Mm -hmm. In fact, the example that I gave to you about the Nilo Farm banana milk, okay? Banana milk. Uh, banana milk just now that I showed to you. Uh, the celebrity actually mentioned that this milk is very good. It can remove toxic and then uh, can make you uh, glowing, things like that. But then now, um, consumers, they are knowledgeable. They look at the ingredient. They know which ingredient actually can make me glowing, which ingredient can remove toxic. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, that's why now, don't play play with consumers. Okay. Then because play. they did a lot. Okay, they know a lot and uh, in fact, that's why uh, producers, entrepreneurs, they have to be very careful in terms of what they are actually offering in the market. Okay. Okay, next questions from the students. Siapa yang mau tanya? Boleh pun pakai bahasa Indonesia, boleh. Pakai English pun boleh. Ini siapa ini? Mau saya sebutin satu-satu. Siapa? Siapa mau tanya? Me, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Anissa. <laughs> Actually, I also have one question. Okay. Uh, I want to ask about how about the implementation marketing, about the mar marketing strategy in Malaysia. Is that the implementation help company to increase their profit? Okay, uh, if I can um, rephrase your question correctly, 
how marketing strategy is in, uh, implemented in Malaysia and then whether yes. this marketing strategy can increase the profit. Yeah. Am I right? That's right. That's right. Oh, okay. Sir. All right. Uh, okay, in Malaysia, uh, now um, if you can see the, the marketing activities uh, more on online, online platform. Okay, because I think now um, the, the number of people actually go online or buy online, purchase online is higher than people going to the shops. Okay, what more during this COVID-19? Okay, um, so that's why uh, talking about marketing strategy, okay. Um, I just share with you um, now because uh, marketing strategies uh, requires the company to think about the current situation and also they have to uh, they have to react based on the current situation okay what happened uh, I'll give you one example this is real example uh, about being proactive and also react to the current situation okay uh, there's one famous restaurant in Malaysia Okay, everybody knows about this restaurant. Okay, in that particular area, I don't have to mention here. Okay, so uh, this business sells seafood, uh, seafood, uh, all this uh, uh, seafood restaurant. Okay, so it's so famous where normally people they have to make appointment to go to this restaurant. They have to booking, do booking in advance. They have to queue if they 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 did not make an appointment. Okay, so because of this pandemic, all right. Uh, nobody actually have the opportunity to go to the to the restaurant, okay? Uh, perhaps uh, before this lockdown, uh, about two, three months, uh, we still, I mean, Malaysians still can go to the restaurant, but quite limited because people are very uh, afraid of this COVID-19 infection. Okay, so the number of people going to restaurant or go shopping also has been reduced. Okay, so what happened to this restaurant? Uh, because they think that uh, they are still number one in terms of serving the, the customer, um, so, but they did not change their strategy. They still sell it on, they still sell it uh, in, in their premise, whereby they expect people to come and also order. And, uh, but they do not know that other competitors, okay, uh, to sustain in the business, what they did is that they, they hire uh, like Gojek, Okay, Grab, uh, here in Malaysia, Grab, Food Panda, right? And this company, the, the seafood restaurant, they still expect people to come to their business. So uh, very unfortunate for this company. They, they cannot sustain. Uh, so I think early this year, they have, they have announced to everybody that they have to close down their business. So uh, this is a, a very good example of marketing strategy. Okay, marketing strategy is not only about uh, how to promote, how to price, okay, but also we have to know where to place um, and also how to react with the current situation. Now, everybody uh, cannot go to the restaurant, but you still can deliver to people or to the customer using Grab or Food Panda, right? So that is one of the uh, important things by entrepreneurs. They have to be strate uh, very strat uh, strategic in terms of their marketing activities, okay? And in fact, hotels, for example, um, they know they don't get um, uh, patronage nowadays, okay? Nobody go to the hotel. So what happened to the restaurant? Okay, some hotels, I can see that because they want to retain the chefs, they, uh, they sell biscuits, for example, or they sell... Uh, food uh, and then delivered to uh, houses so they still have businesses uh, what we call as the the pivot okay they, they make the effort to actually change a bit in terms of the strategy so that they can still sustain uh, in the business all right uh, there are many other examples uh, companies that uh, really really look in terms of their strategy during this COVID um, a good example like Asia Okay, um, in Asia, I think they, they are very affected with this COVID-19 19 because the border is still closed, so they cannot fly, no customer can actually uh, go on board. Uh, but uh, I think what the company has done is basically they venture into different business. Okay, uh, because they know they want to sustain in this in this in in the industry in business, so they have to uh, do different different thing, um, and because they have to look after how many uh, thousands of uh, employees. Okay, so marketing strategy is very crucial, uh, not only to protect the business but also they are looking for the employees. 
All right. So if they fail, the business fail, definitely employees also will fail, whereby they have to be retrenched, terminated. So they have to go to find, uh, go and find uh, different, different work. Okay, so that is quite sad. So um, again, um, marketing strategy, um, you um, any employees, uh, sorry, any entrepreneurs, they oh, have yeah, to really think like about that. their marketing strategy. Okay? All right. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, uh, thank you for your explanation, Dr. Sadia. So uh, is there any question again? Is it enough? Enough? Oh, okay. They have okay. enough then. <laughs> <laughs> because as a, I think after this, they have class also, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Because the class starts until, uh, yeah, after, I think, 7, 7, I 7, okay. 7 p.m. All the students okay. at home or they are in campus? Uh, some in campus, not not all at home, but sometimes, but uh, we can calculate how many people that in oh. in the campus. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I, I think it's enough, uh, Doctor Sadia. So very interesting and a very, uh, very what we call it? Yeah. Uh, very knowledgeable talking about this issue, especially for the Islamic product. I think I want to ask again, but I think this time is very short. <laughs> so, so, so that's why I think it's a good point. So we can conclude that. Uh, so. Uh, Islamic uh, product on marketing mix. Uh, so we have to be smart uh, to select the product, uh, how, how we are to maintain uh, the, the marketing itself. So we are as accounting students, we have to know and we have to allocate uh, the, uh, the, the cost or expense uh, about the marketing. So how we are promote the product, we have to uh, consider about uh, this issue, especially we have to give the trust and also we have to open to the customer uh, about the price and also the effect of the product and also how we sell the product to the customer in the right way and the legal way, especially what expected as stated in Quran and Islam. Okay, uh, so thank you very much uh, for your time, Dr. Saidi Sa Shadia Abdul Shukur. And inshallah, we can meet again uh, with another section, another program. And uh, for me, you have uh, hopefully after this. <laughs> is that <the> Not online. <laughs> <laughs> Not online. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, so that's why uh, I think we need to discuss maybe on with another program, maybe in okay. Malaysia. Or yes, maybe in no problem. Most welcome. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think uh, for me as moderator, so I'm sorry if I have a mistake uh, in my explanation and also uh, my speech uh, before during uh, the Dr. Sadia Abdul Shokor give a speech. So thank you very much for coming, Dr. Sadia, and thank you very much for all the students coming here. So for me, uh, I have close to my uh, as moderator. I can close. Subhanakallah namdika. Shadu Allah ilaha ilaha anta astafruka wa atubu lay. So see you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I give it back to the sister Anissa. Thank you, sir. Uh, that's the lecture from the Mrs. Sadia and Mr. Bahrul. Thank you very much for your good lecture. This material is so attractive and valuable for us as the students. So... Before we close this meeting, I want to take a picture of all of us. Please. Oh, I like this part. <laughs> Please. Everyone be ready. I will count one, two, three, and you are ready. One, two, three. Check, check. Nah. One more. One, two, Three. Okay. Okay. Let's see now. <laughs> okay. Finally, we come to the end of this event. To close this event, let's reciting Hamdalah together. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alamin. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your coming and for your nice attention. I'm leaving. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Waalaikumsalam. Bye-bye, Dr. Sadia. Bye-bye, everyone. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Arung, jumpa di sana nanti, ya. I hope when, but I don't know when. Yeah, exactly. I also don't know when. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you.